Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. Good to see you again, thanks for watching. In this video I'm going to continue my series of videos on calculus and I'm going to show you how to uh, do an example of integration by substitution. And we're going to um, look at a particular substitution involving trigonometric functions. Okay, so let me share my screen with you and uh, we can start. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice about this is that the font is huge. If you're watching on a mobile device, uh, I'm trying to get my presentations more mobile ready, and that means a huge font. So if you're watching on a mobile device, please let me know what your experience is. Okay, so we're asked to use a trig substitution to calculate this integral. So let's just call this, I don't know, say i. Now, the geometrically minded people watching will go, come on, Chris, you don't need a trig substitution to calculate this. I can just do it by geometry. It's a quarter of a disk or a quarter of area of a quarter of a circle. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that a bit later, but we're going to carry out what we're asked to do, use a trig substitution to calculate this integral, the value of i. All right, so how do we do it? All right, so first of all, we'll, we notice that the integral involves a square root and a constant squared minus the thing that we're integrating with respect to, the x squared, the variable squared. Okay, now that tells us that we can use, say, um, a sine function. We're not told which trig substitution, so we have to work out which one we want. But that shows us that uh, the, the a squared, say, minus x squared, tells us that a sine function would be suitable. So, so let's just write that down. So our, our integrand, the function that we're integrating, our integrand is of the form a squared minus x squared. And so we can try something like this. Let's say um, uh, x equals a sine theta. Now, this is 3 squared, so in, in our integral, a would be 3. Okay? So let's do that. All right? So x equals 3 sine theta. Okay, if we're going to do a, do a substitution, what we want to do is take something that's difficult or potentially difficult and make it simpler. Okay, all right, so we, we, we replace x with 3 sine theta. We need to replace this differential, this dx. So if I say differentiate both sides of this, I'll have dx d theta equals 3 cosine theta. So let's write that down. So dx d theta equals 3 cosine theta, or equivalently, dx equals 3 cosine theta d theta. All right, well, we're almost ready to perform our substitution. You'll notice that this is a definite integral. So we're integrating from x equals 0 to x equals 3. Now, with this new um, uh, uh, substitution, we want to put everything in terms of this theta and d theta. Okay, so we're going to have to make appropriate changes to the limits of integration. All right, so if x equals 0, okay, so x equals 0, so we would take, uh, so 3 sine theta equals, equals 0, so sine theta equals 0, so that means theta equals 0, okay. And if x equals 
three, so we're up here with the top one now, what we get there will be solving this for si uh, three equals three sine theta, so sine theta equals one, and we would take pi on two here. So theta equals pi on two. All right. Now here we're only interested in the values of of theta between say zero and pi on two in this case. All right. Now you could technically solve you know solve these equations for other values of theta, but these are the ones we're interested in. Okay. So let's take this. Let's take this, and we'll take these, and we'll sub them back into i. All right. So, hence, substitution. Yields the following. Okay, so we're going to have nine minus a. Uh, 3 squared sine squared theta. This is going to be replaced with 3 cosine theta d theta. Uh, this is going to go to 0 and this is going to go to pi on 2. Okay, so let's write that all in. Alright, so we've got this big Right, so when we plug this in, we're going to square this, so it's going to be 9 sine squared theta. Uh, times uh, with uh, dx, so dx is 3 cosine theta d theta. Okay. All right, so I've just squished that in there. Now, you might be thinking... Come on, Chris, you just told me a bit earlier in this video that the idea of substitution in integration is to take something complicated and make it simpler. But if you look what's on the page, we've made something, you know, not too complicated look much more difficult. That looks much more difficult than what we started with. But bear with me, we are going to get some simplification, okay? especially this 9 minus 9 sine squared theta, okay? Now, I can use my basic identity cos squared plus sine squared equals 1, okay? So I can actually, if you want to take a common factor of 9 out there, and you're going to get the following. Okay. All right. Now, cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. So this thing in here, 1 minus sine squared, is just cos squared theta. Let me push that up a bit. Okay. So this whole thing now, that's going to be 9 cos squared theta. Take the square root. We're going to get that times this. Now, again, we can take the square root here, so we're going to get 3 cosine theta. Now, we only want the positive square root there because theta is between 0 and pi on 2. Okay, so here I've used cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1 from this step to this step. And now, okay, that's going to become 3. I've got 3 over there. So I'm going to get 3 times 3, which is 9. And I'm going to get a cosine out of there and a cosine out of there cos squared theta d theta. And now we have to think about how we're going to integrate this. Well, I'm going to use 
the double angle formula. Okay. All right, so cos squared theta can be written in terms of cos 2 theta in the following way. Okay. So that to that is just the double angle formula. So this half can come out the front and then I can integrate 1 and I can integrate cos 2 theta. So if I integrate 1 with respect to theta, I'm going to get a theta there. And I integrate cos 2 theta, I'm going to get a half sine 2 theta. Okay, and because it's a definite integral, when I plug in this and this, the, the theta equals 0 is going to give me 0, and the pi on 2 will give me um, uh, pi on 2 there and 0 there. So when I plug those in, I'll get that, which is just 9 pi on 4. Okay, now. The geometric viewers are going, Chris, what are you doing? You can do this calculation in one line. And you're right, you can do this calculation, you can perform this integral in one line. Okay, let me show you, and I kind of hinted at this at the start. All right, so the original question was to evaluate this integral, and but in particular use a trig substitution. If that wasn't there, there's no way I would spend all this time doing these, these, uh, these, uh, th this method to come up with 9 pi on 4. Just as a quick check, let's revisit our steps and look at the integral again. Okay, so in this context, what I'm going to do now is just a quick check. All right, okay, we can draw this function. It is... The part, the part of the circle that lies in the first quadrant in the xy plane. Okay. Now, I know exactly how, to, and, and the integral from zero to three is the area, the shaded region, the area of the shaded region. So I know exactly how to compute that. It's a quarter pi r squared, where the radius is three. Okay, that's going to be 9 pi on 4. Okay, and so we got the answer that we had by the long way over here. Okay. All right, now let me just go back to one other thing. How did I know to use this form here? Why didn't I use something else? Well, um, you could use something like cosine if you wanted to, but the important thing is that you've got this minus this, and when you simplify, you can use cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. That, that's really important. Okay, If you didn't have this constant squared minus x squared, then this or cosine substitutions um, uh, wouldn't necessarily be the best way to go. Okay? All right, so let's, let's, just, let's just recap. We were given a problem. We... We asked to use a trig substitution, even though it's a longer way. We realised we had an integral of this form, and we chose a substitution, computed the differentials and the limits of integration, and then made a substitution. Now, for a little while, it looked like it was going to become horrendous, but we used some identities to break it down and then finally compute the integral. And as a check, in this case, we could use basic area of um, uh, integrals and area to make a quick check. Okay, so even though that was a, like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut, um, hopefully you've, you've had a look at this trig substitution method. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, if you're watching on a mobile device, I'd really love to hear about your experience with uh, my new large font format. If you have any suggestions or comments, you can always 
um, send me a message or put them in the comment section below. Thanks again, everyone. Bye.